Welcome back to the Bald Eagle 242 channel. Today I'm going to show you a quick and easy way to test all the safety switches on your mower. You don't need to understand electrical wiring or the inner working of these switches to troubleshoot your mower with what I'm going to show you today. It's very simple and to the point. The first thing you'll want to do is check this solenoid on the bottom of your carburetor to make sure it's working. The simple way to check that, just turn your key on and off. Just put a finger on this or hold it. You can listen and you can feel it. I'm flipping the key on and off. And that's how you check this to make sure that's working first. The next thing you'll want to do is come over here to the side of your mower that has the starter on it and find this black wire. I've already cut this, but I'm going to show you why here in a minute. And what I do when I'm done here is I just get a barrel connector, connect this together, and that makes this easy to plug and unplug. But find this black wire, comes out of your ignition wiring harness, and this runs up to your coil. Cut that wire, and what this effectively does, and this is for testing purposes only, guys, and I can't stress this enough, don't cut this wire and try to use this mower because your key switch will not shut power to the coil. The only thing it's going to do is shut that solenoid off on the carburetor, and it takes it a minute to stop. Do not cut this and try to use your mower. If you've got a multimeter, Set it on a setting that'll beep so that when you make continuity, in other words, when you've got a short, it'll beep. So when you touch these leads or complete a circuit, the meter will beep. And that tells you you've got a completed circuit. If you use a test light, you'll want to put your test light to your battery, depending on where your battery's at. Some of them are up in the front, some of them are under the seat. And then put your other test lead on this wire. Not the wire going up to the motor. The wire coming from the wiring harness, this runs up to the key switch. It also runs through all your other safety switches. What I'll do is clamp one end of this on to the wire coming from the wiring harness. And it doesn't matter if you put the red wire or the black wire on there. All we're doing is looking for continuity. And then the next thing I'll do is just find a good ground. Some place where it'll make your meter beep. Or if you're using a test light, instead of putting it here, you'll want to run it to the battery, depending on where your battery's at. Make sure you've got that hooked up correctly. Since we're using a meter, I've got one wire on the wire. I'm going to put the other lead here underneath this bolt. And when it makes continuity now, you can hear that beep. Now I'm going to turn that off because that gets pretty annoying. Okay, at this point, our key is off. When the key is off, it should have continuity on that wire, and it does. So what I'll do, put this back on continuity. I'll turn the key on. If all of our safety switches are bypassed right now, that should shut it off. Now one here that's obvious is the seat. When I push down on the seat, that tells us right away our seat safety switch is working. There's another common safety switch that goes bad on this brake pedal. That's located down in here, that when you push this pedal down, it activates that switch right there. All right, and this switch here bypasses your seat safety switch. So when we test this one, we're going to leave the seat safety switch off so nobody's sitting on the mower. So I got my meter back on now. Nothing on the seat. The seat will shut it off. But now the brake pedal, when you press this down, you have no continuity. But here's the problem. This switch is working intermittently. If I let that up just a little bit, there's kind of a few dead spots in it. Right now that should be buzzing because the brake pedal is released. Right now this mower would still be running. So that safety switch for that brake pedal is not making contact. I'll go ahead and replace that brake safety switch and then we'll check it out again here. Alright, there is one other switch here that you'll want to look at, especially if you've already got the fuel tank off. And this one should beep when you take the switch off. So make sure that's your blade engagement, but that way you can ensure that basically three switches, your seat switch, your brake safety switch, and then your blade engagement switch. Any one of these can keep you from running this mower the way it's supposed to. Best way I've found to get these out is just take a pair of channel locks and just kind of squeeze the whole thing together. Once you get that most of the way through there, just reach underneath it and grab it. Drop your deck down so you can get to it easier and make sure your parking brake is not on. And then you can just pull that switch out the bottom. All right, these switches are pretty common. Uh, in fact, this one says it's for a Husqvarna, but this is pretty much the same safety switch on any MTD or Husqvarna, Craftsman. They're all pretty much the same. But like I said, I'll leave a link down below the video so you can see it. I'm going to try to get underneath here. Went ahead and pulled this deck back off so I could show you a little bit easier with the camera. Uh, and if you haven't seen it already, I did another video, a real quick video on how to replace the uh, belts, sharpen the blades, and balance the blades on this deck. I'll put a link to that right up here. 
All right, when you put this in here, this is pretty tight to get this in here. This is your brake pedal. This runs back to the back. Put this so the button is down and just push this all the way up in there until it clicks those little tabs into place. And then just put that in there so that when you, you know, reach out here and push the brake pedal down, you can kind of see there how that works now. You can hear that switch clicking. We'll get it hooked back up here and make sure it's working. All right, once you get that switch in the bottom there, come back up here on the top. And I did put this switch in backwards. This uh, clip was on the front. I've now got it on the back. Doesn't matter other than the fact it's gonna be a little harder for the next guy to get it out. But for wiring purposes, it doesn't matter. Just make sure when you put your plug back in, you turn it the same way so it matches the switch. Just make sure you get that seated all the way down on there. All right, I got that brake safety switch in place now. I'm holding the seat down so it doesn't beep here while I'm talking to you. Let me show you this here real quick. Then I got one more safety switch on this mower I'm going to show you here. There's a total of four plus your key switch and your solenoid on the carburetor. Let go of the seat here. You'll see now. Push that brake pedal down. That shuts off the buzzer. Now, I'll show you one other thing here. Uh, a lot of people don't realize this. You can lock this brake pedal down, but hold that brake pedal down. Pull that rod right there up and that effectively that's your parking brake to hold that pedal down so the brake is engaged now another thing i want to show you here when i was testing this blade engagement over here with this make sure your brake pedal is down but nobody's on the seat if somebody's sitting on the seat it shouldn't have continuity so this is how i was testing this when it was underneath the dash there so brake pedal's engaged but the seat is not and you can see that switch is working tells us the brake pedal switch is working and the seat switch is working now if i press this seat down no continuity so this tells me that everything would continue to run when i engage those blades and if you're sitting on the seat and this is engaged i can release this brake pedal now and it won't beep either now if i let the seat go it will so every safety switch that I've shown you so far on this thing is now working the way it should. The last safety switch that I'm going to show you here is your no cut in reverse. And there is a little switch down in here that when you push this over and put it in reverse, it engages that. To check this switch on the no cut in reverse, you'll want to hook your meter up exactly the same way. Got my wire hooked up there to the uh, kill wire, my ground here. I did set a gas can on the seat to kind of simulate somebody sitting on the seat. What we're trying to do here is simulate the conditions where you would be cutting the grass. So our brake pedal is released, our seat switch is pressed down, the blades are engaged. And guys, even though I don't have a deck on here, these switches are all up here on the top. It still does the same thing, so it'll work exactly the same way if your deck is on there. Alright, so in this condition now, if you try to put this thing into reverse, it's going to shut the engine down. It's going to put continuity to that kill wire and it's going to stop. Some of these mowers do have a position on the key switch. You'll see here it's a picture of the little tractor pushing backwards. Turn your key to that position and that will now allow you to cut in reverse. Some of these mowers actually have a button where you have to push the button for two or three seconds. Some of them actually have a different key position. So that would be normal, will not cut in reverse and that would be if you do want to cut in reverse. So you can do that instead of bypassing the switch. When it's in this key position here, the cut in reverse, you can put this on and it'll still work. That should cover every safety switch on this mower and how they work together with each other. And that does test the key switch too, so you can make sure your key switch kills it there. But reconnect your kill wire and these little barrel connectors, put one on each end and then push that together. And if you ever need to do any testing again, it's real easy to unplug this. And then obviously I'll put the deck back on too. If you got any questions, leave a comment down below the video and either me or somebody else that's watching the video may be able to help you with some suggestions on some problems you're having. Till next time guys, thanks for watching.